It's good to be with you today. Uh, the good Lord has given me a message that I want to share with you today. And uh, first of all, I want to say, uh, as we approach this Thanksgiving, my wife Judy and I have so much to be thankful for. And we count each one of you, uh, as you are out there watching this video now, and uh, all of you that care about us and pray for us and have expressed your love and concern for us. Uh, we're so thankful for you this Thanksgiving. I, I just can't thank God enough that he has allowed my wife Judy and I to be a part of this sweet fellowship that we have with you. Thank you for keeping us in your prayers. Um, we keep you in our prayers and we pray and pray day by day that the good Lord will answer your prayers and that God will grant you your requests in his love and mercy. And we know that he hears our prayers. We know that he loves us all and we know that he answers the prayers of his people. And so he is answering your prayers as you pray for us. And we know he's answering our prayers as we pray for you. And as we all pray one for another in this sweet fellowship, what a wonderful blessing to be a part of the family of God uh, on this uh, Thanksgiving season. Uh, what a time uh, it is uh, to count our blessings and be so thankful for what God has done for us. He is so good and he's been so good to us. I want to ask you to please keep Judy in your prayers. As most of you know, Judy had the heart surgery, open heart surgery, uh, triple bypass surgery back in July. Judy has been having some symptoms uh, that are not uncommon after heart surgery, symptoms that are uh, pretty common for people that have had such serious surgery. She's been having some symptoms and uh, it's been of concern. And uh, I want to ask you to please keep Judy in your prayers. Please keep us in your prayers, and we thank you so much uh, that God will continue to heal uh, my wife, Judy, and continue to strengthen her and help her to recover, to a full recovery. You know, there's so much that is happening in the news right now. It's overwhelming, as I've said many times, and uh, I know most of you are following these events in the news, and uh, we'll be talking more about that in the days to come. But in this video, I want to focus just on this Thanksgiving message that God has laid on my heart to share with you today. And uh, concerning Thanksgiving, you know, to me, there's just no holiday that is, is greater. Uh, we're talking about a holiday of celebrating and saying to God, thank you. Thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you for Jesus uh, the Alpha and Omega from beginning to end, everything about him. We're saying thank you about our Lord Jesus. We're saying thank you to our Father uh, for all God's blessings poured out through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, Thanksgiving is not about nationalism. A lot of people uh, put all the holidays in, in the, the wrong context, I think. There's some, some of the holidays are, are meaningless anyway. But uh, Thanksgiving is not about uh, any nation or any uh, uh, tribe of people. It's not about uh, any uh, politics. What Thanksgiving is really is about, it, it began uh, when some Christian people, born again Christian people, were being persecuted. And so they left their home and they went looking for a new home, a new land. And uh, we're not saying that they found uh, a uh, utopia. We're not say, saying that uh, this land where they came became a utopia, not by any means. But we're saying that this is, this is a story about Christians who were looking for a new land getting, to get away from persecution. And they, they, many of them died on the journey. Many of them died as the, the new colony started. And they... They wanted to give thanks to God Almighty in the name of Jesus. These are Christian people that wanted to say, thank you, Father, for your blessings. You have, uh, you have spared 
some of our lives and you have uh, provided for us and you have uh, seen us through hardship and and now we have come to a time of harvest and we want to say thank you for the bounty and the provision of God and so they're thanking God and uh, this was this has been remembered you know over the years and so that's this is why we celebrate uh, Thanksgiving uh, of course every day is a day of Thanksgiving there's no question about that every day of our lives in Christ should be a day of Thanksgiving and it must be a day of Thanksgiving if we're walking close to the Lord it, it, we the Lord says be thankful and we've got so much to be thankful for and so uh, today what I want to do is just share a couple of short stories with you uh, uh, these are a couple of short stories I did not write these stories uh, these are just a couple of short stories that uh, I have found and uh, I just want to share a couple of stories with you one is about a, a lady and one is about a, a man and uh, I just want to share these two stories with you today and hope that they will encourage you and upbuild you in some way uh, these stories have encouraged me uh, so here's here's the first short story. This is a very short story that I want to share with you today. Karen yanked the rake through the leaves with angry strokes, sending dust and sticks flying everywhere. Stopping for a moment, she looked around the yard to see her slow progress. When she had first moved into her house years ago, Karen had loved the shade given by the tall oak trees and maple trees. She hadn't thought of the thousands of leaves that would have to be dealt with every autumn. But it was much more than the chore of raking leaves that fed her anger today. Karen had just received word that a friend was struggling with a serious illness. And Karen was angry about the unfairness of suffering. And Karen had also just recently lost a loved one, a close relative that had meant so very much to her and so she felt anger about being left without the companionship of her longtime confidant and as she meditated on her anger it grew until she was now taking it out by flailing away at the leaves that she was raking she decided she needed a break so maybe a cup of coffee would cheer her up a little bit so she went into the kitchen and as she relaxed with her coffee, her glance fell on a scripture verse that she had long ago put on her refrigerator door. And here was the verse, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. She almost laughed out loud. Give thanks for a yard full of leaves and no one to help. Give thanks for a friend with a life-threatening illness. Give thanks for the loss of her beloved relative. And then she looked at that verse again, seeing something she had missed before. The word was in, not for. In everything, give thanks. She sipped her coffee slowly. Could she find a reason for thanks in all these circumstances, if not for these circumstances? She looked out the window at the towering oak trees, now filled with bare branches instead of fluttering leaves. She saw a gray squirrel scamper across a limb and into the safety of his snug nest up in the oak tree. Thank you, Lord, she whispered, for the way that you care for all your creatures, great and small. And she thought of her dear friend and her lost loved one and all the memories she had. And Karen whispered a prayer of thanks for their friendship and for their courage and faith. And she smiled, recalling their many times together. And Karen thanked God and she buttoned up her jacket and put her gloves back on and grabbing the rake she headed back into the pile of leaves she had left only a half hour earlier and the day seemed brighter and the job seemed a lot easier and the wind even seemed friendlier 
Raising her face to the sky, Karen thanked God that he had spoken to her. He had spoken his truth to her about the joy of giving thanks in all things, in everything, give thanks. You know, I want to, I want to share with you my experience. I've, there's many times in my life, and, and if you're an honest person as a Christian, you'll admit there are times in our Christian walk I've been a Christian for many, many years. There have been many times of discouragement. There have been times of anger. Uh, we're human and we have feelings and you can't always control your feelings. Feelings, uh, feelings sometimes are just beyond something that we can control. Uh, we can control what we believe and we can control a lot of things, uh, but we're human and sometimes your feelings uh, will uh, go astray and uh, so you know what I've learned so much of the time to do is to give thanks to God when I'm feeling these times of discouragement when I'm feeling even times when maybe I'm feeling some bitterness that I have no right to feel or I'm feeling anger that I have no right to feel but I'm feeling I'm just having feelings that I know I shouldn't be having and I know that I don't want to have because they make you miserable. Instead of enjoying the Lord and his love and goodness, you're feeling sorry for yourself or you're, uh, you're feeling uh, entitled perhaps to things that you're not really entitled to. Or uh, maybe you're feeling that uh, things should be different when really uh, God knows how things should be and need to be. He knows what's best. Uh, when we have these times, when I have these times, I have a list, I call it my thank God list, you know, where I, I have made a list of, of line after line after line after line of things that I have to be thankful for. And I'm sure that it's not even 1% of the things that I have to be thankful for, but you just can't think of them all. You know, the Bible says, forget not all his benefits. You can't remember them all, but, but forget not all of them. Don't forget all of them. You can't remember every one of them, but don't forget them either. Don't forget some of them. And so I made this list and uh, I will get my list out when I'm feeling down and I'll just start going over that list and just thank, thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you, Lord, for this. And I'll tell you, if you will take the time to do that and invest your time in that, you will be so glad you did because by the time you get to the end of the list that you've made, and, and of course, like I say, God knows how many more things you could thank God for that you can't even think of. By the time you get to the end of that list, uh, I tell you, my heart is just full of joy and thanksgiving and praise to God. And I'm asking him to forgive me for any uh, bitterness that I'm feeling or any sad feelings that I'm feeling. Uh, we're, we're, we're in need of that. It gives praise to God. It pleases him. And it brings joy to our heart like nothing else. And so I, I just want to encourage you. Uh, and now I want to read you this, this second short story. This is another short story. Mike worked as a janitor at a local school near his home. He came to work after the children left, and he worked hard all alone in the building at night. Mike was not fast, but he was very thorough. Carefully, he swept the rooms in the small school. He emptied the waste baskets. He removed the errant paper airplanes from atop the desk. He cleaned the restrooms. He polished the mirrors. Month after month, year after year, he faithfully did these menial chores. How carefully he did his job. When he was asked if he ever got tired of cleaning up after the children, Mike answered, I probably would if I was doing it for them but I'm not. And then he smiled and a twinkle lit up his eyes and he pointed toward the ceiling and he said, I do it for him. It's my way of saying thanks for all his blessings toward me. 
Mike understood that a grateful heart is a powerful motivation. How easy it is to see what we do as unimportant. The homemaker who cleans bathrooms that only get dirty again, who spends hours preparing meals that are consumed in a few minutes. The blue collar worker who does a seemingly menial routine over and over. The white collar worker who sits at a desk week after week feeling so insignificant. Workers of all stripes who do countless tasks day by day without any recognition. It's easy to get discouraged. Life is not a thrill a minute. But what if instead of working for our family or ourselves or our boss, what if like Mike the janitor, we did it all for him? The scripture says, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. That's Colossians 3.17. If we look at each task before us as a gift to God, would it really matter if people don't appreciate it? If our efforts poured forth from a thankful heart instead of from just a grim determination, wouldn't our work take on a higher meaning? When Paul wrote those inspired words to the believers, he was writing to people who lived in poverty. They were living under an oppressive and corrupt government. But the Lord called them to speak and to act from hearts filled with thanksgiving to God because they had a wealth of riches that the world could not recognize or ever understand. In Christ, we have a joy knowing the love of God in Christ and the love of brothers and sisters in Christ. We have the deep comfort of fellowship in God's family. We have the joy of forgiveness of all our sins the joy of being cleansed and made whole and complete in Jesus Christ. We have a peace from God that passes all understanding. And in the word of God, in the Psalms and scriptures, we have the joy of praise to God that lifts us above the mundane world in which we live. We know the security of being a beloved child of God, rescued for all eternity by the Son of God. We have been raised up into heavenly places, now living as citizens of the kingdom of God, a blessed kingdom of unlimited breadth and height and length. And so whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So, you know, God spoke to me through these stories and encouraged me in these two little short stories. And uh, I hope it gives you encouragement also. And, and the main thing I want to close this uh, video with is uh, to say to you, if you have not made this peace with God that we're talking about in Jesus Christ, I urge you to please do that today because God loves you so much and he created you in love and he sent his son into the world in love. And Jesus lived a perfect life on this earth and he died on the cross. He suffered a horrible death and he suffered immensely to take your punishment and to take my punishment because we are sinners. Uh, we've fallen short and God knows we have uh, stumbled along life's way in many, many ways and we're sinners and we deserve eternal hell. But Jesus paid the price on the cross. When he died on the cross, he suffered in your place and in my place. And he took it all. He took all the punishment himself. And through his life and death, through his sacrifice on the cross, through what Jesus has done, we can say to God, thank you. Please, dear God, you did it all. Save me, I pray, through Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus. I come to you in repentance and faith. I come to you saying, please forgive me, Lord, for my sins and wash me clean and save me 
through Jesus Christ who died on the cross for my sins. Thank God Jesus is the Savior of the world. He did it all. He is the only one, the only way to heaven, the only Savior, the only salvation. He took our punishment. He rose from the dead. He's at the right hand of the Father and He's coming back. And I urge you to make your peace with God if you haven't done that. And if you have done that, then rejoice and be thankful and uh, celebrate Thanksgiving with joy and gladness and uh, draw near to God each day. Uh, seek His face. Read your Bible every day. Pray to the Lord every day. Have sweet fellowship with God and with with any born-again Christian that's willing to have fellowship with you, fellowship with them and, and love one another and uh, give the Lord your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give Him all you've got and uh, draw nearer to Him as He will draw you nearer and nearer each day. If you seek Him, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be answered. Ask and it will be given to you. Now, I want to just close this uh, short video here. Uh, recently, uh, our daughter, Kristen, got married. And uh, I thank you, all of you that have kept her uh, husband, Andy and Kristen, in prayer. Thank you so much for uh, being a part of our family. You're our extended family. And so I, I just want to share just a, a few short uh, pictures here with you in this video uh, of the wedding. Tomorrow, uh, I'm making this video on Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. Tomorrow, Thanksgiving Day, will be their second anniversary, two months. <laughs> married for two months tomorrow. They were married on September 28th. And uh, here's a few pictures of uh, Andy and Kristen at, at their wedding. Here's the bride and the bridegroom. Here's the old man giving away his little girl. Here's the pastor praying with Kristen and Andy. And here are the newlyweds with my bride of 41 years, my Judy, the little lady with a big heart. We haven't lost a daughter. We've gained a wonderful son and we are thankful.